this one guy was really nasty to me at, at a church that's really in my hometown. I ain't going to say the name, but it was a church that was in my hometown. So I'm like, yo, they're going to you know, show me love or whatever. I pull up. They didn't recognize who I was, I guess. You know say They didn't pay attention to the flyer or something. And so this uh, this deacon or whatever, or elder, he was really nasty to me, bro. And I was just like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to minister and you got me, you know mm. what I'm saying, in a different headspace now because I'm looking at you different. And I was like, God, just let me, you know, just let me just calm down. And I was like, God, use me in this moment. Mm. So I, I minister my music. The Holy Spirit hit in that mug. And like, we're worshiping. Like, mind you, I'm rapping, but I'm also singing, doing worship songs and stuff. And the Holy Spirit fell in that mug. Everybody's crying and da-da-da-da. And he had to come to me after that. And like, I'm so sorry, man. I didn't know who you were. And I'm like, I was like, imagine if I was somebody off the street. You know mm. what I'm saying? And I'm just coming and trying to experience God mm. for the first time. And mind you, I had a hat that said Jesus on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't nothing crazy. But uh, imagine if I was somebody off the street and you treated me like that. I would never come back. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Uh, this is a special edition because we had to do this over. Yeah. It's early in the morning. <laughs> y'all don't know that, but we know that. So we're going to bring y'all the energy like it's 8 o'clock in the evening, but it's actually like 10 o'clock in the morning. Facts. Uh, but I got my guy Mike Teasy in the yes, building. Sir, what up, yes, brother? Sir. What's good, bro? Oh, man, appreciate man. you for pulling up again. Man, that, thank you for having me back, bro. Let's tell people how we had this amazing conversation and then... <laughs> We gonna just say the devil, like it just facts. The video ain't work, but I was gonna post the audio because it was good. Hey, the audio was amazing. Yeah, yeah it was good. Sure. Man, how you doing, man? Bro, I'm doing good, man. You I can't complain. The, the album is out now. You know what I'm saying? The video is going crazy. Yes, New, New Leaf. Leaf is out right now. Yeah, man, it's been going crazy. So crazy, guy, man, for real. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't out when we first talked. Nah, yeah, we was just talking about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, um, I actually gave it a listen. Man, uh, what was that. it? What was your favorite? Uh, track the record on that. Ooh, that's tough. Um, I'm gonna go with loose leaf. Loose leaf. Yeah, that's like the very like any like the end of the album. It's okay. The very last song. Yeah. Um, I checked the, the project out. I only gave it a listen once. I I, I was able to give it a one listen, yeah. but the one listen that I did give it, it was good. Yeah. Um, only thing I would say that caught me by surprise, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Is the range. I didn't yeah. know you had that much range. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like you singing. Yeah. You rapping. Rapping. Then you got a little bit of the pop. afro. The like, pop. Yeah, like it's, we it's, got yeah oh. everything. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Hold up. Like what? Um. So I know some of the motivation we talk. Uh, I think we talk about Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah for things sure. Like that. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Franklin. Yes. Um. But yeah. I, I feel like I hear a little bit of. It's like, it's, it's not yeah. just centered around one person. Nah, nah, so many different ones, bro. Talk to me about so, the upbringing in, in the music. When yeah, it, when so man, I was actually raised in the church, so my parents, like, they're, they're definitely like singers and musicians and stuff like that, and other family members that do music and play around with stuff. Um, so growing up, I mainly just listened to gospel music, so I was highly influenced by gospel. So like I said, Kirk Franklin, Ty Tribbett, Fred Hammond, like, all of those people, but... Um, growing up, I started, you know, experimenting with different sounds and just hearing other people. So like Busta Rhymes, Chris mm -hmm. Brown, Drake, Lil Wayne, like there's just all these different type of artists and so many different styles of music that I actually like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like, as far as me as an artist, I don't like to limit myself or limit God, like how he can use me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing the, the Afro, I'm doing the pop, I'm doing the R&B, I'm doing rapping, like everything, because I feel like that's what God has given me, you know, the gift to do. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's funny because I was going to say, I was like, man, I got to be careful with my words when I get on this podcast. <laughs> but my ear, I'm going to be yeah, completely yeah. honest with you. I was like, bro, it was one song I was I'm like, this listen to, um, this sounds like Chris Brown. Yeah, bro, I get Did that you a lot. Get that? Okay. I get that a lot. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was scared to say that because you know I got to be careful when you compare. <laughs> nah, it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I'm like, yo, wait. I get that a lot. Yeah. Wow, bro. Yeah. But then you could rap. I think on one song you were saying something about... um. Uh, I think you said what's in my pocket is yeah, I feel all good. Blues. What, what was yeah. it? It was like, like what's it, in my it, pocket no, is more it's than all, a million. It's all, it's all, no, he was like, in my, in my pocket is all Hughes, but they might think I'm talking about Benjamin. Oh, Langston. Yeah, Langston. Yeah, Langston. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, nah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's going, this guy going crazy. Bro, people be missing so many bars, bro. It's, it's wild. It's Dang, wild. bro. So let me ask you this then. So yeah. like growing up in the church, um, yeah. we know, we all know uh, how 
in Christianity, yeah, um, like is is this thing like we're not supposed to listen to secular music? Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, music is 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 definitely about God. Yeah, and for it's sure. Christian and it's Christian centered. Mm-hmm. However, um, it can be confused with Facts. secular music. For sure. How was that coming up, and how did you like differentiate man to create this music for God, bro? And not have people question. look yeah, at it yeah. as secular. So, like I said, my parents are, are was ministers like growing up. But when they moved to North Carolina, they became pastors. Mm-hmm. So my dad is a pastor. You know, he really didn't allow secular music and stuff like that in the house. And so um, me and my sister, we used to like run home on Wednesdays to watch Wildin' Out or Wild Out Wednesdays or whatever mm-hmm. on BET when it was 106 Apart. And so that's where we kind of saw a lot of the music videos, like the Missy Elliott's, the Busta Rhymes and all of that. So like I said, growing up, I, I saw, of course, like Michael Jackson, my mom, huge Michael Jackson fan, you know, when she was, you know, coming of age and stuff. And so, uh, like, my parents were kind of against the, the secular music for sure. But, you know, in school, you know, you got friends that yeah. listen to music. I had a friend that literally used to burn mixtapes for me and, you know, give them to me or whatever. And so it was just, like, different people, like, you know, rapping, like, singing R&B, different things, like Usher and Chris Brown on there. And so I, I heard those songs, and I was influenced by them, you know, early on. So, um, like I said, I started as a dancer, at, actually, like when I was like four years old, just started dancing, mimicking Michael Jackson, James Brown, different people. Um, and growing up, I, I still wanted to dance. Like I thought that that was my gift. I thought that that was all I had. Like I wasn't even tapped in with music like that. Mm-hmm. So having a whole family that's musically inclined, singing, playing different instruments, all I played was the drums and I danced. Like that, I thought I was a background guy. Like that's all I wanted to do. And so, uh, like I said, growing up, my dad really, really wasn't for the dancing because he had a background in dancing, like, you know, when he was in the world. And so when he got saved, people told him that this was a sin, that was a sin, da 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 you can't do this, you can't do that. And so he was relaying the same messages to me coming up. And I was like, you know, dad, like, the devil tried to take me out at an early age, you know what I'm saying? Um, at the age of seven, I was run over by a drunk driver. I think we talked about this last time. And so my legs were just the opposite way. Doctor said I'd be paralyzed for the rest of my life. But God healed me. So I'm like, dad, like, I want to dance, but I want to dance for God. Like, this happened later on in life, but... Um, you know, early on when I just was dancing, I was dancing to, you know, everything, you know, any and everything. Um, but when I rededicated my life to God, I was like, yo, let me do this thing for God. But then I was like, what do I dance to? And so that's when I started playing around with the music. So, mm. yeah. So you got into music so you could dance. Exactly. <laughs> that's that was literally, it's crazy. And so, um, when I was in college and stuff, we had a, a, a jerking crew, crump crew. We used to like literally travel and dance. Like that's all we did. So we was doing shows. But we was just dancing. So when I rededicated my life, I came back to, to college and I was like, yo, I feel like we can still do this dance thing, but let's do it for God. And everybody's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Nobody really wanted to do it. So I ended up just being by myself. Mm. But then I was like, you know what? What do I dance to? Because I really didn't know of Christian hip hop like that at that time. Like I knew of it, but I wasn't really tapped in like that. And so I was like, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to just find whatever songs is popping right now and I'm going to remix them. Mm-hmm. And so that's where everything kind of started for me, just doing like these Christian remixes, putting them on YouTube, putting them on Facebook, tagging all my friends from college, just like letting them check it out or whatever. And uh, it started getting around the school and they was like, yo, bro, you can actually rap. You can actually do this. You can do that. I was like, man, maybe I can I can play around with this a little bit more. So it came more than a hobby um, towards like the end of my college you know, journey. And um, I was like, man, if I, I want to you know, make it before I graduate. And here we are <laughs> 10 years later, you know what I'm saying? 10 years plus. And I, I didn't make it like as soon as I graduated, but God was like shifting me like uh, in my mindset, you know what I'm saying? So all the while, like, I was just tilling the ground, learning the craft, learning like these different s- the skills and stuff and obtaining them by doing all these remixes. Mm. And so uh, I was playing around with like, you know, Busta Rhymes and just like the Chris Browns and all this stuff. So it's really like stretching me. That's why you talk about the range. That's why I have that range because I was like playing around with all these different sounds coming up just trying to find my sound. Mm. So, yeah. So, wait, at what point did you do, because you had did a, um, a Kirk Franklin, like, yeah. through, was yeah, this yeah. doing that early age as so, well? So, no, no. So, this, um, so like I said, I've always been like highly um, inspired by Kirk. Mm-hmm. And um, growing up, we used to dance to like Stomp and Revolution and all these different things in church. And so I think I did a remake. I think it was like 2020, 2021, one of those. Um, and I did the, the New Revolution is what I called it. So that was like me paying homage to him and just doing a flip to Revolution. Yeah. Okay. So I seen on your interview with Roland Martin, he had yes. some, and he said he was yeah. going to DM, DM, send him the video. Did he ever do that? So I think Roland sent it to him, but I don't know if he ever got to look at it yet because I haven't got reached out of nothing yet. So okay. I'm like, bro, we still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> we still waiting. I saw it and I was like, he was super apologetic. And I was like, that, 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 made, that made me think of something else. 
Have you ever, like, because you've been having so much success in this, mm -hmm. um, was there ever a time where you met somebody that you always looked up to, that you always wanted to work with, Man. and it kind of was like, it, it was the opposite feeling, like, oh, they, like, they let you down? Yes. Oh, Definitely been some of that, you know what I'm saying, in the gospel. Because the other thing about me, too, when you speak about range, it's the fact that I can sing and I can rap. Mm. So it's like, what lane do you put me in? You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so a lot of people have been showing love in the gospel space, but early on it wasn't like that. You know what mm. I'm saying? And so uh, I'm not going to say her name, but it was a gospel artist that I, I was trying to, you know, just take a picture with. And I was like backstage for this like big festival in North Carolina. And um, I was like, yo, my mom is a huge fan of you. I, I love your music as well. She's been playing your album nonstop. You mind if we get a picture real quick? She was like, not right now. I said, oh, mm -hmm. say less. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I learned, you know what I'm saying? At that time, I was like, you know what? It's a time for everything. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe I came at the wrong time and I had to take a different approach. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not just be bitter and just write her off, but you know, realize that people are human. You know what I'm saying? If they just got done doing a job, you don't want to hit them immediately. So now I'm dealing with the same stuff where I get off stage and somebody's trying to talk to me, but I'm I'm diff I'm a little different. I'm a little too nice sometimes yeah. where I let people talk and talk and talk and I, I be like losing my voice, you know what I'm saying? From just, you know, constantly using it and not saying, you know what, let me get a few minutes to just collect myself and I'll come right back to you. Mm. So I, I guess there's two ways that you can do different things where you can just say no or just like kindly say no. Yeah, I'm not say right it's, now. All, it's, yeah. it's all in how you do it too. Cause I Facts. remember I had a time when I was in LA, I never forget this. And I tried to uh, get a picture with Alan Iverson. Man. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> That's fire though. You gotta get that. I forgot how he played me. He was like, uh, I don't know what he said. It wasn't like he said no. He was like, bro, yeah, yeah. like, I don't know if he said like all these girls in here, something like that. And I'm like, <laughs> what? oh, all right. I That's never, crazy. And since that day, I don't think I ever asked for nobody for a picture unless we working or something. Like, I never, like, I would never ask another man for a picture. Like, nah, that's cool. real. I feel you it. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's AI, though. You like, gotta seize the moment. What about, like, the what they say, um, idols return, become rivals? Man. Have you felt that? Like, people trying so, to gatekeep almost? No, nah, it's definitely some gatekeeping for sure in both sides of it. So, like I said, I'm accepted in gospel and I'm accepted in hip hop too, but sometimes I feel like I'm not accepted mm. at the same time. So there's people that we looked at as like legends in Christian hip hop where I felt like I would reach out and I wouldn't get nothing. Like I wouldn't get no love. I wouldn't get anything. But now it's to the point where different legends are reaching out like the truth. Mm. Like we got a song that's about to, you know, drop soon. And, you know, I'm just like looking at him like, bro, like, I remember dancing to your music, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like when I was trying to find the Christian hip hop to dance to, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like fast forward and you see different people that reach out and like, yo, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. Bizzle, shout out to Bizzle. He's another one that's like, man, he's super solid. He just hit me like a couple of days ago. He's like, bro, I just realized like we ain't got a song together. Like mm. we got to make this happen before I, you know, hang up my coat. You know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, I hope that ain't soon. Cause like I, I used to study his pen cause his lyricism is crazy. Wow. And so, um, like within a gospel space though, like just different ones, like Ty Tribbett, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was back in like 2017, like, you know, God had dropped in my spirit to like just tag different artists. And I was like, all right, bet. So I tagged uh, KB first. Mm -hmm. He's like, he used to be signed to Reach and he's doing his own thing now, going crazy um, with HGA. And um, and I tagged him first. He ends up commenting like fire emoji, started following me. I was like, okay. Holy Spirit said, do it again. I said, all right, bet. So the next person I tagged was Ty Tribbett. Like I knew it was a shot in the dark, but I didn't know what was going to happen from it. And so hours go by. I had just did a show that same night and I, I forgot all about me tagging him. You know, hours go by. He actually starts commenting like, oh, wow, I love this. Yo, we got to do a remix. Da, 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 da. This is 2016, 2017. Mm. I'm like, OK, fire. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to happen tomorrow. Like, right. nah. So um, all the while, like, you know, saying time is going by, but he's periodically checking in. Like, yo, man, I ain't forgot about you. Just know, you know, I'm still supporting you. I rock with your music. Da, 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 da. I'm like, yo. Man, it's fire. We said, we gonna do this remix. We gonna do this remix. Another year go by. I'm like, yeah, we ain't gonna do this remix. Right. I started getting discouraged. Yeah. I was like, you know, this is crazy. He reaches out again. I ain't forgot about you. Da, da, da. So I'm like, yo, all this while, like I could have just, you know, thrown in the towel, forgot about the whole thing. But in this season, I just kept working. Mm. I kept tilling the ground, kept sharpening my craft. And, you know, fast forward to, you know, last year, I, I start to open for him in, in Charlotte. So he did an event. Um, he was doing his tour. I, I can't remember the name of it off top, but last year he did his, I think it was All Things New Tour. And um, he was like, yo, tag whatever artist in this area, da, da 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 I end up winning and I got to open for him. Mm. And it was crazy because 
it was the stage that I graduated college on. Wow. So it was a super full circle moment, bro. I was like, man, this is crazy. Did he remember it was you? He, oh yeah, he knew who I was. Okay. Yeah, because we still was, you know, chopping it up okay. from, here, from here to time to time. And um, what's even crazier, like, but before that even happened, I had to the show in Dallas. So my family, uh, we all are from Charleston, West Virginia, where Bishop Jakes is from. And so I grew up in his church. So I grew up with Cora and Sarah, which is another full circle moment that I can share uh, later on. But um, they moved to Dallas, Texas. So a lot of my family moved to Dallas with him. And Bishop asked my dad to stay behind to help the next pastor. Wow. Yeah. So my my aunt is still his personal secretary. My uncle's the co-pastor at the Potter's house. And so uh, I, got, I got in town because I had a show in um, in Texas. And it, I think it was on Friday night or, or Saturday or something like that. And when we landed um, on like Thursday, I told my uncle I had a dream. I was like, Unc, I had this dream that you was going to hit me and ask me to perform for the Potter's House. Mm. And I just, you know, told it to him because I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. And I just told him anyway. And sure enough, after my show on Friday, I get a call Sunday, Saturday morning. He's like, nephew, how you feeling? You want to do uh, you want to perform for the youth on Sunday? I said. Heck yeah, what you mean? Yeah. Mm. So I pull up. I think they wanted me there at like seven or eight because it was like they do early services and different ones. I was like, oh, Jesus, this early. But I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make it happen. So I get there and this gentleman is serving me. And he's literally like giving me water, giving me tea, giving me towel, like whatever I needed. He was just like, bro, you look so familiar. Turns out it's Ty Tripp's brother. Oh, wow. And so I do the set and he was super rocking. Like He was just like, bro, I was blown away, da, 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 da. So we were leaving the church and I get a text message and it was Todd Trippett. So mm. apparently his brother said, yo, we just had Mike TZ up here. You got to, you know, work with da, 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 da. And so Ty was like, yo, listen, I haven't forgot about you. We still going, we got to get you to Orlando. Fast forward, he has me at his church. I do a show for his daughter. She's putting this event on. And so like, it's, it's always been like a, a solid, like a mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? Like he really does rock with what I'm doing. So I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And so, like I said, last year I opened for him um, for his All Things New Tour. And um, this year they reached out and had me open for like two stops in uh, in Florida for him for his new tour wow. that he just did. And so I was like, man, this is it's crazy how things continue to go full circle. Like, you know, from moments back then when I'm just like, you know, I used to dance to his music. Like, I got the victory. I was dancing to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Going from dancing to that to performing on the same stage as this man. Crazy, bro. It's, it's crazy because, like, um, yeah. in the beginning, you never really understand how the process goes. Yeah. Like, even me, like, trying to get interviews, just anything, right? Yeah. And, like, you, you get frustrated. Man. But then it's like you need those moments because when that time do, do come, yeah. it makes you appreciate it so much more. Facts. It's like, man, oh, my Facts. gosh. Like, I remember, like, when I was... When when I finally got in touch with him and yeah. I was trying to get this and I was yeah. trying to talk to him and now look at me facts bro Sheesh. crazy oh man yeah that, God is good for sure Yo, facts yeah what what is the hardest part about um like you said you grew up in the church yeah right now you're making this music mm -hmm. and I mean I feel like it ain't no it ain't no people who criticize you more than Christians no facts that's <laughs> so facts yeah what is the hardest part about like making the music you make even though it's for God yeah. right but also um. Just being human, bro. Facts. Like, yeah. what's the hardest part about The that? hardest part, man, like you said, um, there is some judgmental Christians, you know what I'm saying? And growing up, um, like I said, I was still dancing and stuff, like, while I was performing. So I started doing music, started getting some shows and stuff like that. So during my sets, I used to, like, dance and, like, pop, like, do I used to flip on the stage and stuff. So a lot of people look down on that or wearing hats. Like, people are so, like, stuck in tradition mm -hmm. that they can't, like, see past it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got a lot of that, you know, coming up and just getting my start. And so, like, I would have, like, different deacons or pastors that say, you know, you can't wear that hat in here. You got to do this, da 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 And so they were talking to me crazy and treating me differently. Didn't even know I was on the lineup mm. for that night. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, this one guy was really nasty to me at, at a church that's really in my hometown. I ain't going to say the name. But it was a church that was in my hometown. So I'm like, yo, they're going to, you know, show me love or whatever. I pull up, they didn't recognize who I was, I guess. You know, say they didn't pay attention to the flyer or something. And so this uh, this deacon or whatever, or elder, he was really nasty to me, bro. And I was just like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to minister and you got me, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, in a different headspace now because I'm looking at you different. And I was like, God, just let me, you know, just let me just calm down. And I was like, God, use me in this moment. Mm -hmm. So I, I minister my music. The Holy Spirit hit in that mug. And, like, we're worshiping. Like, mind you, I'm rapping, but I'm also singing, doing worship songs and stuff. And the Holy Spirit fell in that mug. Everybody's crying and da-da-da-da. And he had to come to me after that. I'm like, 
I'm so sorry, man. I didn't know who you were. I'm like, I was like, imagine if I was somebody off the street, you know mm. what I'm saying? And I'm just coming and trying to experience God mm. for the first time. And mind you, I had a hat that said Jesus on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't nothing crazy. But uh, imagine if I was somebody off the street and you treated me like that. I would never come back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that was some of like the, the, the major issues that I, you know, dealt with, you know, starting up. But now it's to the point where, you know, the music that I'm doing, the sounds that I'm doing, I'm still doing the remixes just to have, you know, fun and reach new audiences and stuff like that. And so a lot of Christians will look at it and be like, yo, you're not Christian enough. Mm. Or, or the world will look at it and be like, you too Christian. So it's like, there's no real lane to actually fit in. So what do you do when you're an outsider? What do you do? You know what I'm saying? In, the, in those moments. And so all I know to do is just lean into God even more. You know what I'm saying? And trust the process, trust the gifts that he's given me, like, you know, continue to work those gifts and, and till the ground, sow the seeds that I have, you know what I'm saying? And, and just watch how they grow because I've had different, even like fans or even, you know, Christian, other Christian artists that have hit me and they had wrote me off early on because I was doing these remixes or wrote me off because I'm singing, wrote me off because I'm doing these different things, but they would come back. And say, yo, man, I just want to apologize because I put you in this one box saying you sound like this artist. You sound like this artist. You sound like that artist. And I'm like, you can't really box in what God is doing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I have so much range. I can do all these things, but God can do all things. You know what I'm saying? And that was one of the favorite scriptures that I had when I first started. I literally studied Philippians 4.13. I just stayed on that one scripture to, to teach me different things. Like I taught myself how to do backflips and running up walls and stuff just from that one scripture. Cause I was like one of those Christians where like when I was like uh, uh, fully like reborn or whatever, if you want to, you know, use that as terminology. Um, when I rededicated my life to God, I stayed on that scripture. I, I just kept nailing it into my head and I was literally taking it like <laughs> for what it said. Like I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I kept quoting it, kept quoting it until I was able to do the things that I dreamed of doing, mm. like flipping. Like I could literally stand still and just, uh, you know what I'm saying? And it was just coming from building my faith at an early age and, you know, growing on up, growing up in the gospel, growing up in Christ. So, yeah, bro, like there's so many different, um, you know, ups and downs with it. Being so, you know, uh, um, versatile, you know what I'm saying? There's so many different um, hills to climb and stuff like that. But in a space where it's already a niche, you know what I'm saying? It's like. You're, you're trying to be too different. You know mm. what I'm saying? And so that's what I, I experienced a lot of, for sure. I was going to ask, like, how do we even, how do you maneuver in that space Man. when it's like you go too far? If you open the door, yeah. there's no telling how how uh, far into that, 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 that clause you can go. For example, yeah. like, you, we say we're not supposed to listen to secular music, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then we make gospel music that sounds like secular music, and then next thing you know, you listen to secular music. Nah, it's yeah, like, how, yeah, like how far do we go? You say you're not supposed to do uh, I don't know certain things, but when we when we you said like you said, people are so used to tradition that yeah. they they aren't open to like uh just God new, moving in a different way, yeah. yeah, different ways. But it's like if you if you are open to the different way, then how far away from the wrong way is that? Again, I feel you. Yeah. So it's like so yeah, there's always a line. Yeah. There's always a line, no matter what you're doing. You right. know what I'm saying? The fact that I'm dancing, there's a line. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't be out here, you know. I don't want to say too too vulgar, but you know what I'm saying? It's like just a pelvic popping and stuff. I'm going to say that. You can't mm -hmm. be doing that on stage. You know what I'm saying? So it's always a line um, with anything that you're doing. There's a line when it comes to uh, uh, sonically, like what you want to, you know, create. But at the same time, um, like with me, I still don't want to box God in. So the the way that I'm kind of different from a lot of people, I'm not saying they're not used by God. I'm not saying they're not listening to God's voice. I'm just saying I really lean in to what God wants to use me for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In whatever season, you know what I'm saying? It is. So whatever song that I'm doing, I'm literally praying before I, I lay down a, a, a vocal. Like I'm literally like, God, what do you want me to say on this track? And like sometimes it's just open conversation. You know what I'm saying? I'll be driving in my car and God will drop something on my heart. You know what I'm saying? Drop something on my mind. And I just start creating without even having music to it. So I'll just pull out my phone and start creating and, and literally just recording whatever God has given me in that moment. And so I feel like once you're doing that, that you can't go wrong because you're literally listening to the voice of God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so when it comes to the, the remixes and stuff that I've done, of course there's some that's like, Yo, you shouldn't touch those. You shouldn't do this, da 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 da. And so, uh, one that I did was, um, uh, what was it called? Unholy by Sam Smith. Mm. And so, in that time, I was like, yo, I got people that was hitting me nonstop asking me to do that song, doing that song, do that song, do that song. I was like, all right, let me check this song out 
and and see what's up. Let me let me just see what I can do. I heard it. I was like, okay, I can mess with this. I can change this. I can change that to to reach another audience. To, to get my name out there a little bit more to see what we're doing in the kingdom. Mm. So that's my whole mindset behind doing any kind of remix is how can we broaden the kingdom? How can we get people to look at it differently? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just reimagine what this song would sound like if it was a gospel song, right? So I, I do the remix and it's going viral. Like it's going crazy. It was like one of my first videos to hit over a million views on uh, Instagram or TikTok. Like both of them went crazy. But then... You know, it was like the audience that it was reaching was mainly Christians at first. And I don't know what happened, but like a month or two go by, it starts reaching a different audience, mm. uh, people of the LGBT community. And so they looked at it as I was, you know, condemning them and and, and saying that they was going to burn in hell. They called me different names and saying that I was homophobic and different things like that. I'm like, yo, I I'm noticing that there is people that's very sensitive about what they got going on. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't even, you know, say anything in the song to bash them. I was just literally giving them the gospel, mm -hmm. saying that Jesus Christ came and gave his life. He was sacrificed so that we can be holy. Like, that's what I said in the song. But they took it as I was condemning them. So I'm like, you know what? There is, you know, certain people that's still going to look at it differently. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be offended regardless of what you do, regardless of what you say. But you can still be careful and mindful of how you say certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fact. I yeah. was wondering, like, how do we even deal with those type of people? For example, yeah. I was talking to uh, Lecrae, and mm -hmm. I remember, like, me doing my research, it was a couple who kind of was, like, condemning him for what he was doing, and they were saying mm -hmm. that, that God came to them in a dream. And it's like, when we're dealing with, uh, like, religion, uh, spirituality, yeah. like, we, who, who are we to say anybody is wrong, and, and who are we to say God didn't come? So I'm mm -hmm. like, how do you deal with those yeah, because it might be negative to you, but not negative to them, right? right? But it's still a different perspective. It's still a different opinion. It's like, yo, yeah. How can I say God didn't come to you, mm. right? But I don't have to agree. Like, exactly. how do you deal yeah, with yeah, these yeah. things, man? This is yeah. things that happen on a daily. Facts, facts, and that's the thing too. It's like God speaks to different people in different ways. You mm. know what I'm saying? And that was the other thing with me. It's like. For me, I want to be obedient to God. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm always trying to please man, I'm go I'm going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just a given. Like, but if I'm trying to please God, everything that I do lines up with the will of God for my life. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So other people, there's a will that they have for their life as well that God has for them. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to, you know, other religions and stuff like that, I don't really, um, I don't really condemn other people, but I'm, I question certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you feel this way? Or why do you think that this is your God? Or why do you think that the universe is this? Because somebody had to speak it into existence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that happens in our life, if you go into our DNA, you find God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There was uh, this guy that did a reel and I think it went viral with like for where he really dug into our DNA and he found the words, he found the word God in our DNA, mm -hmm. which was insane. You know what I'm saying? And so for that, for that community, I don't, I don't really treat anybody differently. You know what I'm saying? Because the word of God says, with love and kindness have I drawn them. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't shun anybody. I'm, I'm still open to talk to you, but I still have my standards. So I'm right. not going to change my view to, to fit what you got going on. I'm going to stand strong on what I believe in. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And still be the light in those dark places. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I hear you say like, uh, things like, um, not exactly like this, but like reborn again. Like when you went and um, yeah, rededicated, yeah, you rededicated your life to yeah. God. I see the album New Leaf. New Leaf, yeah. Uh, I and, and and the first thing I'm thinking about is just for me not understanding. Yeah, like you came up in the church, so I'm yeah. automatically thinking like exactly, man, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this rededication? Yes. What is this New Leaf? Like yes. you always been here. Like yeah, what is this? And see, that's the thing. Like so many people get it confused where you go to church, you raised in the church, you a Christian, like. That's it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it, it's, it's, it goes deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's more of the relationship. You know what I'm saying? That's what my walk is really like about. You know what I'm saying? It's just a relationship with God. And so people want to write you off as just religious, but it's really about the relationship. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So growing up as a kid, I knew church. You know what I'm saying? I knew to go to church on Sunday. I knew to pull up for Bible study. I knew uh, uh, choir rehearsal, dance rehearsal. I was at everything, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't have that relationship. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So growing up, I was still in the church. I was still, I knew church. 
I knew how from top to bottom, open with prayer, scripture. Like I knew the tradition mm. of church, but I didn't know God for myself. Mm. So I feel like that's the main uh, key and takeaway for a relationship with God. You got to tap in with him. You know what I'm saying? You can't be so focused on tradition that you lose sight of him mm. in the midst of it. What you do you know what think saying? you, um, I guess, veered off? or, or Yeah, so like I said, with, with college, like, even though I wasn't, you know, out, you know, doing crazy things, I was still, in, like, I was trying to be in the in crowd. I was trying to fit. I was trying to please people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to, you know, get girls from dancing. I was trying to do all these different things. And my, my, my sight was on the wrong things. You know what I'm saying? And I got a call that one of my friends, I think we talked about this last time, uh, we were like the co-captains of the basketball team in high school. And he gave me the name Mike Teasy. You know what I'm saying? And, um... I got a call that he was shot and killed. Mm. And that was really the eye opener for me in that time. And it was just like, you know what? Tomorrow really is not promise. You know what I'm saying? Like there's literally no telling what's going to happen in the next second, in the next minute, in the next hour. We don't know when it's our time, when God is going to call us home. You know? So after I got that call, I was like, man, like God, I feel like I'm living for you, but I don't really know you. Mm. And I was like, yo, that was really an eye opener for me. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm serving in the church. I'm playing the drums. I'm uh, I'm doing the sound. I'm, you know, doing the offering. I'm doing whatever, you know, what you want me to do. And I'm just moving in these in these areas within the church. And I don't really know you. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally dropped down to my knees and started worshiping and crying out. And I wrote a song and it was literally Show Me Your Way. It's one of the first songs that I wrote that was just, just with no music. It was just, just writing what was on my heart. And I was literally just saying, show me your way. Show me your way. Show me your path. And I'll acknowledge you in all my ways. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And everything that I'll do, I'll make sure that I give you glory and honor because at an early age, I should have been gone. You know what I'm saying? I should have been dead. I should have been paralyzed, but God healed me. Mm. And I didn't know of my purpose or what he wanted me to do at that time. But as time went on, I saw like, yo, God's hand of favor really been on my life. You know what I'm saying? And why would I not honor him? Why would I not reverence him in all that I do? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, how do you hear uh God's voice, right? Man, Be yeah. Because um, even like when you talk about the two accidents, right? Mm -hmm. You got into the one accident where you got ran over, then there was another one where they, the x ray came. Yeah. And, then, then and my back was it. broken, yeah. Yeah. And some people would say, <clears throat> God is warning you to stop. But I you feel were like, like nah. God is, yeah. is healing me to keep exactly. going. Exactly. Exactly. How was you able to hear that from God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And how do you decipher which is what? Facts. That's a good question. So. For me, bro, like, like the word of God says, like, uh, no good thing without without withhold from you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So everything that's happened in my life where it, it seemed to be traumatic and I seen where God healed me, that was just a sign to me where, where God was saying, I got you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No matter what it is, I'm with you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So the, the fact that I, I was ran over by a car. Um, where it, it felt like to me and and what God was showing me, it was like the enemy was trying to take me out before my time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So who would have knew that I would be doing what I'm doing today? You know what I'm saying? But God knew all the while. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know at all because I was like, man, I wanted to take my life at an early age. Like I was literally drawing up plans. I used to slip my wrist and do different things trying to take myself out because the enemy was toying with my mind at an early age. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I hated the world. I hated being here. I literally would be at church and have the meanest mug on my face, bro, and didn't really know why. I just hated being, you know, being alive. Mm. And there used to be a deacon that came to me, and he would literally give me money so I could smile, bro. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But I was just doing it, you know what I'm saying, just to be doing it. Mm. And didn't even know what was going on. Didn't know what I was dealing with internally. But as I got older, God started dealing with me with certain things. And so, I, like I said, I went through depression. I went through suicide. I went through all of those things for a reason. And I feel like the enemy was really trying to take me out at an early age. But the fact that God stepped in and healed me, that showed me that there's purpose for my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, stop flipping, stop dancing, like, you know, hang it up. But I'm like, nah, God has given me this gift and I want to give him praise with the gifts that he's given me. Mm. So, yeah. No, nah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. Yo, you, you, you dropped this project, right? Yeah. And, really. Um, it just, if it, it, it feels good. Yeah, it fact. feels like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> no pun intended. What, what would you, what would you call this, this, 
moment in your life right now, this chapter in your life, like, man, what would you name it? So, this chapter has been crazy, to say the least. Like, um, I, I'm really blessed. I, I will say that I'm definitely blessed. And in this season of of New Leaf and, you know, the album and everything, I, I really wanted people to see past the four walls of the church. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of people, you know, see the album New Leaf and they hear, I'm turning a new page, I'm turning a new leaf. And that they think that's the only message that there is. Mm. But uh, the the main gist of, you know, what I was creating with this album, because the, the album before was the Greenhouse Project. And I was like, yo, how can I, you know, create this, this idea of a new leaf? You know what I'm saying? Where, you know, we go through seasons of life and... In this season, I'm talking about a new leaf. Like, what does that actually mean? How can I dig deeper in that? You know what I'm saying? And what God was showing me in creating this whole project was the the fact that we go through these seasons. You know, you see the spring where, you know, flowers are blossoming, blooming, and, you know, trees is, you know, a uh, uh, plus. And, you know, every, all, the, every, all these things are growing. And, and we see, you know, all these fruits on the trees and stuff like that. But what happens when fall happens? You know what I'm saying? Leaves start to change colors, you mm. know, leaves start to fall off the tree, you know what I'm saying? But there's always the next season where a new leaf will sprout mm. from those trees. And that's what I want to kind of uh, articulate in this album. And I feel like that's what God was showing me. So even closing out the album with uh, Loose Leaf, I, I kind of dealt with that a little bit more where um, Loose Leaf, it, God just gave me this idea while I was driving and I was like, yo, Okay, God, like, how do I articulate this where I, I'm talking about a literal loose leaf that's about to fall off a tree? Like, how can I talk about this? But then also tie in a loose leaf sheet of paper mm. where it's like it's a brand new sheet of paper. Like, God, I'm a new sheet. Like, use me again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't ball me up and throw me away. Use me again. So in this season, it's like I I'm literally just asking God to use me again. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw me away. Mm. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but use me again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if I stay on that path of of newness and renewing my mind daily, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because every day there's something that you're bound to do that may not be pleasing to God. You know what I'm saying? And, and knowing that and being okay with saying, God, forgive me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I did. I don't know how I did. Sometimes you might know what you did. Sometimes you may have slipped up. Sometimes you may have, you know, went the wrong way or went astray, but you can always come back to God. You know what I'm saying? And, but don't take advantage of his grace. You know what I'm saying? It says his grace is sufficient. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we wake up and there's newness every morning. There's new mercies every day, mm. but you don't want to take advantage of that. So once you make the decision to turn this new page and turn this new leaf, actually follow through with it. You know what I'm saying? Actually try to see God more. Actually try to walk in this newness and, and stay on that lane. But there's times where you may fall. You know what I'm saying? But um, the word of God says uh, he won't utterly cast you away. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, uh, your steps are ordered by him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So every step is ordered. If you fall down, that was ordered by God too. And I had to learn that. I was like, yo, why is that, God? Like, why would you order my steps for me to fall? You know what I'm saying? And I had to learn in that season too, it's also to humble you and keep you humble. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because pride goes before the fall. You know what I'm saying? And what I did earlier in this year, I did an EP that's called Before the Fall. And so a lot of people, you know, um, you know, they hear pride goes before the fall, but I was trying to lead up to the album, which was dropping this fall. And I really wanted to drive that message home that, you know, pride goes before the fall. And once you fall, you can still turn a new leaf. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was, you know, pretty much trying to articulate. That, that remind me of uh, is a poem or uh, I don't know if it's a poem, but it's a passage that uh, footprints on the, in the sand. Yeah, facts. And, it, and it's like God is carrying you the whole time. Yeah, yeah whole time. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes God can can make you fall, so to say, to show you that He's still with you. That exactly, he, He's carrying you. Exactly. Whole time, a lot of people think that when when all is bad and when the worst ha has come yeah. and they're at and the bottom, they're yeah. lowest, <laughs> they think that, like, how can God allow me to get to this mm -hmm. point if he's real? Then he would show me he's real the whole time. Facts. He's doing that to show you that he's doing that to show yeah. you that he can get you through it and that he has your back through, through it all. Exactly. And it's like, that's yeah. crazy, man, the fact that you said that. That's the first thing I thought about. Facts, bro. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people, too, that, you know, have came to this space of Christian music and, you know, all things are going good for them, but then... They fall or, or something happens and it's traumatic and then they turn away from God. Mm. When I feel like in those moments, you should dive even deeper into the word, like really get closer to God because he is your strength. He's your source. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, there were so many times where I would get low, <laughs> excuse me, 
And um, I was still dealing with depression. Mm. And I was like, God, I thought I dealt with this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I going through this again? And there was those moments where I even, you know, contemplated suicide again. I was like, no, God, I thought I dealt with this. I thought I was good. But it's keeping me in that in that mind frame where I got to stay in God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because he is my my strength. He's my source of strength. Like, when I'm weak, his strength is, you know what I'm saying, is for me. You know what I'm saying? It's for my weakness. And so I, I know that I am not perfect. You know what I'm saying? And, like, if we were all perfect, we wouldn't need God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so it, he's showing me, you know, through life and, and through my ups and downs that I still need him. Like, never get to the point where you feel like, you made it or never get to the point where you're like, Oh, I'm him now. You know what I'm saying? Like I still remain humble, remain teachable. That's like some of the like principles that my parents brought me up on. Like they literally drove that in, um, you know, growing up. And I, I try to stay that way, stay teachable in all things. Like I learned from younger people than me. I learned from older people. Like I'm just, you know, I stay learning. You know what I'm saying? I stay with a teachable mindset so I can continue to learn and grow and get better, mm. you know? So yeah. Yo, do you um like recognize how far you came and like and who you are in this space right now? So, yes and no. You know what I'm saying? There's times where I'm like, yo, God, you really brought me a long way. And I can see the growth sonically. I can see the growth financially, physically. Like I can literally see the growth. But then there's times too where I I still um I'm my worst critic. You know what I'm saying? I'm really hard on myself because I, I expect greatness. I expect these different things because I'm a perfectionist as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, how can you say that you're a perfectionist, but you also know that you're not perfect? You know what I'm saying? It's like, how can you how can you balance that? How can you do that? But um, I think that's what keeps me humble. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see the growth. I see the streams. I see the numbers going up. But I also see where I can get better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what what keeps me, you know, in that, in that humble space for sure. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's good, bro. Yeah. Oh man, what um, I don't know. He was like when you first started, uh, yeah. or when you first re redirected your life to God. <clears throat> yeah, like your close friend had passed away. Yeah, I know. Sometimes um, people feel this sense of like uh, what is it called um, like survivor's guilt. Do mm. you ever feel that way? For sure, mm. for sure. Even earlier this year, so um, it, it's crazy because. So in my high school, we had three co-captains of the basketball team. So it was myself and I had two other friends. And so, like I said, the first friend, I got a call when I was in college. And um, earlier this year, I lost my other co-captain, mm. which was crazy. And it's even crazier because uh, New Year's Eve, I was doing a show in, in Dallas. And I got a text message from my friend. And he was asking me for help. Mm. And he was like, yo... I'm down right now. I need some help. Da, 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 da. And I was so busy. I forgot to hit him back. Mm. Man. I forgot to hit him back, bro. And uh, that joint hurt. I forgot to hit him back and I got a call or I, I saw it online um, like uh, a couple months later that he died. Mm. And I, I, I felt so guilty because I didn't hit him back. I was beating myself up. I was like, God, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like I could have helped, you know what I'm saying? Like if I had it, I would have done it. You know what I'm saying? But in that time, I was just so busy with life, so busy with shows, so busy that I didn't take the time to hit my friend back. Mm. And now he's gone. You know what I'm saying? I can't get that time back. And that joint hurt. You know what mm. I'm saying? I broke down. I was crying. I was, I was just going through it. I'm like, God, like, you know, why, why did this happen? You know, I didn't even know what he was dealing with, mm. but I didn't even take the time to ask. You know what I'm saying? And that's what another moment that you definitely humbled me to like, yo, like you're still human. You know what I'm saying? And and people that, you know, that you've met along the way are still human too. You know what I'm saying? Like there's things that happen where they may have been going through something so tough and, and they thought that you were their only sign of hope. You know, how can you be the light if you're not trying to be the light? <laughs> how can you be the salt of the earth if you're not trying to actually be the salt? You know what I'm saying? And so... I can't, you know, just, you know, shun people off um, and, and just think that, you know, since I got this certain status or, you know, financially, I, I'm at a better uh, place than what I was when I first started. I can't be like, yo, everybody just wants something from me. I got to listen to the voice of God. You know what I'm saying? I got to like, yo, God, 
how can I help this person? Should I help this person? Like, what do you want me to do? And sometimes there's people that do want to take advantage, you know what I'm saying? But also I have to still be open to hear the voice of God, mm. to say, okay, God, do you want me to serve in this capacity? Like, do you want me to give or sow this seed? And God, if I sow this seed, like, I have to be okay with maybe not reaping from that seed. You know what I'm saying? Like, because one plants, one, you know, waters, but God gets to increase at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? But I got to be okay with sowing a seed and walking away from it mm. and not just always looking for what I can get out of that seed that I sowed. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I ain't going to lie, though. That's still like a heavy burden to carry, though, bro. Facts. Even like just trying to handle like your own success, trying to yeah. handle your own career, trying to climb the ladder of success, so yeah. to say, for yourself. But yeah. Still trying to be there for the people that uh, I guess you came up with, especially when y'all on different paths. Yeah. It's like, there's no love loss or anything. Facts. It's just like, bro, I'm focused on what I'm focused on. Exactly. And now nah, I even deal with that. That's, that's, that's tough. Bro, that's tough. Facts. I got people to this day, like people have reached out from, from college, from, from high school, just from hooping, like around the, the city and stuff, like different, different uh, rec uh, recreation centers. I can't talk to them. <clears throat> different recreational centers that I, I used to hoop at and stuff like that. I'll randomly just pull up, you know, just whenever. And dudes will walk up to me like, yo, what are you doing here, bro? Like, mm -hmm. you you a rapper? Now you doing this, da 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 Why are you still coming to the court? Why are you still mm -hmm. hooping? I'm like, bro, I'm still human. Like, I, I, they was like, man, that meant so much to me. I'm like, wow. Like, I didn't know something as small as just coming to a recreation center mm -hmm. that I used to hoop at all the time could mean something to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like saying, oh, you not, you not too good to hoop with us now? Like, that's that's crazy. I'm like, no, bro, I still love the game of basketball. Like, yeah, I'm still going to hoop, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's been crazy, like, just different friends that have seen um, um the growth and stuff. Like, I had a friend from college just hit me up, like, a few days ago. And he was like, bro, I was scrolling on Instagram, and I saw the beats. He just shouted you out. Mm. Man, I'm so proud of you, bro. Like, you really doing your thing. Like, you stuck to your guns from high school, from from college. Like, you, da, 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 you really doing your thing, bro. I'm proud of you, man. Like, we got to link. We got to do lunch or something. I was like, yo, I'm down. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's do it. And it's just so crazy to, to to see different people on their paths as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? People that was not talking about God in, in college, was not even thinking about God, but now they're circling back and like, yo, your music has helped me. Like I did a, a Bible devotional for my new album, New Leaf, as well. And I had different college friends actually downloading my, my Bible devotional, bro. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, they're mm. literally posting it, saying, like, they're, yo, they're on this journey of walking with God now, and they're trying to do this and trying to... I said, God, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, just shining a light in those places from, from early on, and they're seeing where I'm at now, they're like, yo, I see God's hand and Like, he really mm -hmm. doing his thing, and God is really moving in his life. Like, this is it's crazy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. So... That's it's a, been wild. That's real. Yo, um, New Leaf is out <clears throat> right now. Yeah. Uh, are you, were you able to like bask in this or are Man. you like trying to, are you on to the next thing? So it's a mix of both. It's a mix of both. Like in this season, I've been, I've been going and going. Like that's when my voice is kind of going on my horse. I've been literally nonstop on the road. So I get like two weeks off, uh, which is great. I'm about to take this time to rest and really just chill. hone in and just chill. Relax. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> relax. Um, but yeah, I've been able to like, just, you know, kind of see different things, but there's been times too, where I just get back in the studio and just record different things. I've been doing like features and stuff like that, but, uh, still just been creating and still staying open to whatever guys still want to use me in because, um, there's always those, those moments where you question if you're done, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so after the album or after a album, whenever you drop something, it's like, man, now I got writer's block or now do I got this? Do I got... Can I, can I continue? Can I make something better than this? Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's always those questions. And I, I still try to create, you know what I'm saying, in those moments. Because I'm like, yo, what can I create from this? Like, what can God squeeze out of my sponge right now that'll still be good? What can it, What can I top? Like, how can I top what I just did? You know mm. what I'm saying? What can I do right now that can top what I just did? And so I'm still, like, creating, like, different sounds and playing around with different sounds um, and just trying to sharpen my craft even more. Because, like I said, I can always get better. You know, yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's crazy because like being creatives, it's funny. Like when I had my lady, like she she would enforce things in my mind that mm -hmm. I needed, 
Mm-hmm. But like that I probably would never do on my own. Like just simple, simple things is like just appreciating the moment. Yeah. yeah I feel yeah. like, especially as men, we get caught Facts. up in like what's next. It's be like, bro, like Facts. I just dropped this big <laughs> interview and then a bunch of my yeah. supporters like, yo, who you got next? Like, bro, Man, I just Facts. think you know how hard that was. Facts. Yeah, so who next? Like, I don't Facts. know. Like, it's literally that, bro. No, second? facts. And I get the same thing, like, yo, I just dropped the album last week. Yo, what's next? I'm like, Huh? I just did you listen to the whole album? <laughs> yeah, I heard that, but yeah, what would you and my wife was like, baby, you just dropped the album. Like, promote this album, like push the album. I said, okay, I'm still trying to push the album. But at the same time, I'm like, I still gotta work. I still gotta do this. I gotta do that. And so like different friends have hit me and be like, yo, so what's what's your uh what's your music strategy strategy right now? I'm like, I, I, I'm still pushing the album, bro. Like, I just I just dropped in August. I, I'm still pushing that right now, but I'm still creating songs and stacking up these songs. Because you never know which is the next thing. You know what I'm saying? What's the next song? What's the next uh, vibe the one guy wants to use um, for whatever season? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? For the next season. So I'm still stacking up songs. I'm, I'm contemplating doing some Christmas stuff. I really don't know yet. But just trying to figure that out. But yeah, bro, it's definitely been a lot of let me just collect myself, collect my thoughts, and just trying to you know figure this thing out and, and really just bask in what we've been able to accomplish mm-hmm. in this season so far. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Having a song with Kaylin Carr, this, the video just hit over 500K, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. That's like one of my first videos to go that, that far on YouTube. I'm like, bro, okay, God is moving. So I'm yeah. still trying to boost my YouTube up and stuff like that. But and she a big deal too. Man, facts. Yeah. <laughs> facts. Nah, you really got some real motion out here, man. man. praise God. It, it, so. it's, it, it's just crazy because like, bro, <laughs> yeah. people, and then the thing about your project, you got like a few songs in there. Yeah. It was like 12. It's like, you got a lot. Uh, Yeah, it was like 15, 15. I think. 15, 15, yeah. So it's just like, bro, you, and, and, I'm not just saying this because I'm interviewing you, but it, like it was a few songs in there, but that was like, damn, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were all different, and facts. I'm like, bro, you really can promote this for a long time. No, facts. I know you're not, but right, right. You can. <laughs> I, I don't know why artists they just they be do on something. The next you work thing. so yeah. hard on a project, bro. And next thing you know, three weeks later, you work on a new one. It's like, bro, like, bro, it's the day and age that we in. Everything is so fast paced, microwavable. Like everybody wants something now, now, now. But now. do the I think people should just do the video play. Like if you so if you got 15 songs. You can really give yeah. them something new with something old. Just do exactly. a video. Yeah, that's video. real. And they're like, real. okay, cool. Matter of fact, we got another video dropping too. The new leaf uh, for the title track. Mm-hmm. We're dropping that soon too. So I was highly inspired by Michael Jackson. So we're doing like a little smooth criminal tribute situation. So mm-hmm. it's going to be dope. Nah, man, that's good, yeah, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you pulling up again, bro. Man, appreciate you. Uh, for the people that don't know, um, New Leaf is out right now. Yes. You can let them know how to support you, follow you, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can follow me on uh, Instagram and TikTok at official Mike TZ. Uh, check out my website, MikeTZMusic.com. If you want to cop some merch, all of that is there. Um, also got a show, you know what I'm saying, coming up in, in November. Uh, it's called Welcome to Harvest Land, the pre tour. Um, where I'm just kind of showing people how we got to where we are right now. You know, pulling songs from the past, but bringing it to the present with New Leaf and everything like that. So, yeah, definitely pull up, get your tickets. If I'm in your city, I think it's going to be fire. You still uh, flipping and stuff? I'm about to get back to that, for sure. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to get back to it. Nah, 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 nah. I can't. I can't. I got to stay. I got to stay in shape. My wife telling me not to, but yeah, yeah I'm still going to do it. For sure. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Until I can't. No, my God. I appreciate yeah. you, bro. Uh, yes, this sir. is good, man. J Hill, J Hill Podcast, Mike yeah. Teasy is a wrap. We out.